Hello and welcome to our special Ascension worship today. I'm Reverend Gavin Tite and I welcome you from St Mark's Church and Holy Trinity Churches in Bermuda. And wherever you are joining us for this worship, you are very welcome. We know we have many people joining us from overseas, from the UK, South Africa, America, Canada and beyond. Um, you're very, very welcome and it's great to have you with us. Let's have a moment of quiet and then we'll pray together our opening prayer. Holy God, as we gather this morning to worship you, may we know your presence with us. Come, Holy Spirit, and empower us that we might be your witnesses to a hurting and broken world. Amen. We're going to sing our first song now, and it's a song specially recorded for our worship today and sung by me and Val Moffat. Uh, it's called Praise Your Holy Name, and it's a song of praise, just praising God and saying thank you for your creation. Let's sing together. Praise your holy name.
Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, we recognise that we are not perfect. We have thought things, said things and done things that have hurt you and hurt others. We have put ourselves first. We need your help to be the people you created us to be. And we choose to turn from our own ways and turn to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be assured that God welcomes you with arms wide open, that you are forgiven and set free. May the Lord heal and strengthen you by his spirit and continue the work he began in you. May the risen and ascended Christ raise you to life in all its fullness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, in our worship, we have three readings and... Today, we're going to have those three readings. We're going to change the order slightly so that they're in chronological order. The very first reading is the gospel reading, and it's Jesus praying for his disciples before his death, resurrection and ascension. And then in the second reading, we have uh, the story of Jesus' final words to his disciples before his glorious ascension. And then in our final reading, we have Peter's letter part of Peter's letter to the disciples, uh, telling them to stand firm and how they're going to be uh, God's people to the rest of the world. After each of these readings, we're going to have a very short reflection. I'm going to hand over now to Rebecca, who's going to read us our gospel reading. Rebecca. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 17, verses 1 to 11. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When I was 18 years old, I took a gap year between my A-levels and starting university, and I decided to travel around Australia. And as travelling was quite expensive, I decided to hitchhike. Now, on my my travels, I wrote a diary. I took a travel log. And I want to read to you what I wrote about my very first hitchhike. I was dead scared. I thought I was probably going to be murdered and it was going to all end in disaster. And for my first ride, I decided to hitch with another guy called Matthew, who was in the same youth hostel as me. And uh, let me read to you what happened on that very first time of hitchhiking. Within a few minutes of waving my thumb in the air, a car pulled over. 
a ride. The car was blue and white with chrome metalwork and looked like it had driven straight out of a classic 1950s car showroom. This was it. My life was over. What a stupid idea to hitchhike. No doubt the occupants of the car were going to chop me up and feed me to the dingoes. However, to my surprise, the driver was a small, elderly gentleman, accompanied by his equally small, elderly wife, neither of whom appeared to be able to see adequately over the dashboard. Perhaps this was the perfect ruse. No one would expect a pair of smiling, white-haired grandparents to be murderous, dingo-feeding maniacs. Matthew and I edged onto the back seat of the car closed the doors behind us, and we cruised off down the road at a stately Sunday afternoon speed. The old man spoke. This was it. He was going to say he had to stop by his tool shed to sharpen his scythe collection. Do you know Jesus? He asked. What kind of question was that? Matthew shrugged his shoulders. Oh yes, I know all about Christianity, was my reply. You see, I'd been to Sunday school. Well, I've got a bit of a confession to make here. (laughs) I was in Sunday school until I found until I found myself sitting with my parents in church whilst all the other children went off to the group. You see, some people called it being expelled. My mum just said I was not expelled, but I was asked to leave. Apparently there's a difference. Yes, I was expelled from Sunday school. That's it, yeah. You all know now. (laughs) Anyway, the couple remained, the couple in the car remained silent for the rest of the journey. You see, it didn't occur to me that I hadn't answered his question. We soon reached Cairns, that's the the, the town we were travelling to, and said thank you and goodbye. I was relieved that my first experience of hitchhiking had been so pleasant and that none of the dreadful things I feared had happened. However, deep inside, the old man's question nagged me. Did I know Jesus? Jesus knew the Father and they were one. And Jesus longs for us to know him and also know the Father that together we might be one. Because Jesus knew the Father, he was able to glorify the Father through his life. Jesus glorified the Father through the works he did and the life he led. Jesus said, Father, I glorified you on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. In the same way, you are created to bring glory to God. This is your purpose and your destiny, to glorify God. You are a walking, talking God glorifier. And how do you glorify God? Well, you do that just by your very existence. If you like, creation speaks of the glory of God, and you are part of God's creation. But we also glorify God through doing the works that Jesus asks of you, and by living your life by and through him. However, in the same way that Jesus could not have glorified his father if he didn't know him, you too cannot glorify God without knowing Jesus. You cannot know what the works of Jesus are if you don't know him. And as you heard in my travelogue, in my diary, before I became a Christian, I knew about Jesus, but I didn't know Jesus. And there is a world of difference For example, I was recently humbled to have a small piece written about me in the Royal Gazette here in Bermuda. That's the newspaper here. And people can read the article and when when they've read it, they'll know a bit about me. But that isn't the same as actually knowing me, is it? Or another way of putting it, Jesus, uh, knowing Jesus and the Father is to have life. Jesus said, and this is eternal life. And eternal life, as we know, means life in all its fullness. And this is eternal life that they may know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Jesus says to to know him and to know the Father is to have life itself. So to sum up, you are called to glorify God. It's the very purpose of your existence. And you do this through knowing Jesus and completing the works he gives you to do. The words from that old gentleman driving that car in Australia, who changed my life. Do you know Jesus? We're going to sing now uh, a hymn that actually is one of the first hymns I heard as a new Christian. And the, just that, that, that verse, uh, there's that verse in it where, where, the, where the, there is the line, I scarce can take it in. 
as we reflect on Jesus' life, his death, his ministry, his resurrection. O Lord, my God, let us sing together.
We listen now to our second reading, Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight, While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The work that Jesus calls you to do to glorify God is to be his witnesses here on earth, to be walking, living examples of Jesus. However, you cannot do this on your own. You need help. And specifically, you need God's help. The helper that God provides is the Holy Spirit. If Jesus needed the Spirit to exercise his ministry and fulfil God's purposes, how much more do you you and I need the Spirit to exercise our ministry and fulfil God's purposes? One of the very works of Jesus through his life, death and resurrection was to make us holy so that the Spirit could come and live in us. Jesus said to his disciples, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. Our calling is not to stand gazing up at the ascended Christ with our mouths open catching flies, but to go, to be sent. The disciples were asked why they were gazing upwards. So immediately they went to the city to gather and to plan how they would be Jesus to the world. They devoted themselves to prayer until the Holy Spirit would empower them. In the same way, it's foolishness for you and I to undertake the work of God until we are empowered with the Spirit of God. However, it's not that the Spirit of God is subject to you. Far from it. It's only when you relinquish control, stop and listen, that you hear the Spirit's voice. And you can't do this if you keep doing and if you stay busy. You cannot do this if you seek to be in charge of your own life. Jesus frequently withdrew to be with the Father, to listen and to pray. If you and I are to be effective ministers, if we're to glorify God through Jesus Christ, if we're to know Jesus, then we need to allow room for the Holy Spirit to move in and around our lives, to live in you and to come upon you. If you're to be an effective minister, if you're to glorify God through Jesus Christ, if you're to know Jesus, then you need to allow room for the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's free gift to all those that accept Jesus and simply ask, come, Holy Spirit. So to sum up, you're called to glorify God through doing the works that Jesus calls you to do. But you can't do this on your own. You can't do it in your own strength. Thankfully, Jesus has made it possible for you and I to be filled with this Holy Spirit who will lead and guide us. So the question is, has the Holy Spirit come upon us? Have we asked, come, Holy Spirit? We're going to sing again now. I love this hymn. Great 
is thy faithfulness. I love this hymn because it's speaking of God's faithfulness and, and he's promised the Spirit. He gave us the Spirit. He promised he would live for us. He lived for us. He promised he'd die for us. He died for us. Great is your faithfulness. As Dudley brought us our second reading, Sue now brings us our third reading, and it's from 1 Peter, Peter's first letter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. 
Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sue. You are called to glorify God through Jesus Christ, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, to do the works Jesus gives you to do. Could these verses from Peter's letter be more appropriate for this time in which we find ourselves? So what is your response to be? How can you glorify God at this time and in the places where you live, in your contexts? If you have accepted Jesus and you've asked for God's spirit to fill you, then you can rejoice because God's glory is being revealed through you. You are blessed because the spirit is resting upon you. This is not conjecture or wishful thinking. It's a fact. So firstly, rejoice. Let joy well up from within you because you live under a promise that, as Peter puts it, God will restore, support, strengthen and establish you. How wonderful is that? Secondly, you belong to God, so allow yourself to be in God's hands. Trust in God. When things go wrong around you, a natural instinct is to take control and take charge. But Peter reminds you to humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Trust in him. Thirdly, when you feel anxious, and you will from time to time feel anxious, you are to cast your anxiety on him. God cares for you. Tell God how you feel. Share your concerns, stresses, worries and pains with him. As best as you're able, allow him to carry your anxiety. And fourthly, remain disciplined and alert. It's a discipline or habit to stay tuned into God. It takes an act of will to surrender your own thoughts, needs, wants and desires and pray your will be done. You need to be alert to what God is saying and where the Spirit is leading so that you may be ready to do God's will. This week, I've been blessed to hear of examples where you have listened to the Spirit and been prompted to act, to encourage someone, to be generous to someone, to go out of your way for someone, all because you have stayed connected to God and been obedient to God's leading. It has encouraged my faith no end to hear and see you being Christ's church, empowered by the Spirit, loving one another and the communities in which we live, giving glory to God through your lives. So stay strong, stay close to Jesus, trust in him, cast your anxieties on him and remain disciplined and alert and let that joy well up within you and be evident to all. Amen. I'm now going to hand over to Helen, who's going to lead us in our prayers. Helen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we lift our prayers to you today. As we celebrate the ascension of our Lord and the promise of the Holy Spirit, may it inspire in us feelings of joy and hope rather than fear and separation. We ask for your blessing to be upon Archbishop Justin, Bishop Nicholas, Archdeacon Andrew, Canon John and Father Gavin. We ask that as the Holy Spirit rests on us, we may bring your loving presence into the lives of those we meet. May your joy and your love flow freely in and through us as we hold fast to the living word, our Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we lift to you our troubled world, its peoples and their leaders. Give wisdom and strength to our leaders, governments and counsellors. Help them to continue to work diligently to guide us through this present crisis. 
Bring them the support and encouragement they need. May they trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we lift to you those that are serving and supporting those in need. We thank you for medical staff, carers, support workers, teachers and parents. We ask that they would know your rest and your peace. May they cast their anxieties upon you, for you care for them. Remind us to support them with words of faith and encouragement. Give us an opportunity to brighten their day with a smile or a word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we lift to you all those we know who are in need. We ask that you would be with those who are filled with guilt, those who are broken hearted, those who are confused and afraid, those who are saddened because of broken relationships, the bereaved, the lonely and the isolated. We pray for all suffering from illness and give joyful thanks for those on the road to recovery. Today, we particularly think of Joan, Vi, Rosemary and Daphne. And in the silence, we lift to you the names of those who need a touch of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, as we go out into the coming week, make us mindful that we should constantly pray for your world and your people, just as Jesus, your son, prayed for his disciples before returning to you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We come now to our Thanksgiving part of our worship. And being a vicar and a minister or a rector or a priest, <laughs> I've been thinking deeply about how do we break bread together when we can't physically be together? How can we fulfill this Lord's command? And I, I've been really worrying about it, if I'm honest. I've been really thinking about it, thinking, well, is it right? Is it proper? Is it valid? And I was praying about this and I, and I felt God speak to me. I, I really felt God say, Gavin, don't worry. You see, as Christians, we live with paradox all the time. For example, God himself is three and one, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Well, how can you be three things and one thing at the same time? It, it seems impossible, but it's true and it's real and it's a paradox and we live with that. The Holy Trinity is a paradox. And in the same way, God's saying to me, Gavin, it's okay if you have bread in your home and somebody else has bread. There, there can be many breads, but there is only one bread. There is only one body. There is only one Christ. It's a paradox, isn't it? But that's okay. We can live with paradox. So I really felt that God saying, don't, don't worry. Don't be anxious about it. Break bread. And if you're on your own breaking bread, that's okay. You can break bread in your own homes, but actually we're all together at the same time. Separate, but together. So we're going to begin with the peace. And Rather than me saying, peace be with you and you just with me, we're actually going, because of that, we're going to say peace to everyone, all the people that are watching this, and they might be watching it all at the same time or at different times, that's okay. And also to say that we're going to, I'm going to have some bread and some wine here, and I've got some lovely bread that was made by the Roster family for us, which is lovely. Um, but so what you can do is if you haven't got any bread or wine or you haven't got anything to eat or drink, you could just pause the video and go and get some. It doesn't matter if, that it's, you're not doing it exactly at the same time. You can pause the video, go and get some, and then come back. So let's say the peace together. The peace of the Lord be always with you. May God's peace be with us all. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give God thanks and praise. 
Lord God, you are our light and our salvation. We give you glory and praise. All things were created through you and nature echoes the vibrant music of your praise. You made us in your image to bring you glory and gave us breath and speech that along with all creation, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. Even though they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. Through his life, death, resurrection and glorious ascension, we are made holy before you. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his disciples and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this and as often do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen and Christ will come again. And so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So take eat, drink, knowing that we are separate, maybe in different places and at different times, but that it doesn't matter. We are one body in Jesus Christ. We're going to sing our final hymn now. It's King of Kings, Majesty. Let's sing.
Thank you for joining us today for this special Ascension Day worship and a final prayer of blessing using the words from Peter's letter. May the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, restore, support, strengthen and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Goodbye. God bless. Let this be my song.